Mentholray has its own set of anti-aliasing quality options. These work in a similar fashion to Maya software, but they have a different naming convention and they're in a different place in the render settings window. To demonstrate these options, I brought back a simple scene that simply has a primitive plane and the camera's been positioned to make that plane appear at an angle. Because again, one place that there is aliasing issues is along any edge that's at a slant, and any sharp edge for that matter. Now, so we can see the pixels a little bit easier, I've also set the resolution to a really small size. In this case, it's 64 by 64. So if you want to adjust the anti-aliasing quality settings for mental ray, you have to go to the Quality tab. The very top section here, Ray Trace Scanline Quality, holds the anti-aliasing quality attributes. And those include sampling mode, min sample level, max sample level, and anti-aliasing contrast. What Mental Ray does is it looks at the contrast between neighboring pixels, and if the contrast level exceeds the anti-aliasing contrast slider, which is 0.1 right now, for red, green, or blue, if it exceeds that, then it uses the high value in terms of max sample level. If it doesn't exceed that, it sticks with the low sample level. So the min sample level and the max sample level really are the extremes of sampling in terms of how many pixels or subpixels are sampled. Now there is one kind of nice feature of mental ray, and that shows you the number of samples right here. They'll explain that when min sample level and max sample level are set to certain values, what you'll get in terms of the sampling. So for example, min right now is set to negative two, max is zero. So that means that I'll get at least one sample per 16 pixels, or at most one sample per pixel. So if I have a really low contrast render, it's going to use a min sample level, which means that I potentially have only one sample per 16 pixels. That's pretty rough. However, if there is a little bit more contrast, they'll use the max sample level of zero. And what that means is I get at most one sample per pixel. So there's actually no sub-pixels in this case. The best I can do is one sample per pixel. Now I can change the min and the max though to have higher quality and have additional subpixels taken. What I have to do though is go up to sampling mode and change that menu to custom sampling. When I change it to custom sampling, I have access to both these sliders. So for example, I can put zero in for min and two in for max. It actually equates to pretty high quality. What that means is I get at least one sample per pixel if it's low contrast or if it's high contrast, I get at most 16 samples per pixel. So 16 samples per pixel is really 16 subpixels, and that's pretty high quality. So anything with a decent amount of contrast has 16 samples taken per single pixel. So this is high quality, and this is actually good for most renders. You want a simple high quality render, 0, 2. Can go higher, of course, it's going to take more time. So again, you have to switch to custom sampling to access those cells. So let's give this a try, though, so we can see it in action. I'm going to render out this view here. I can have a small render. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. So this is high quality now. So a fairly soft edge here. Now if I reduce the quality, I'll go back down to negative 2, 0. Negative 2, min, 0, max. We'll re render a region and take a look. Dolly in again. So in fact, the region I rendered appears a little bit softer, but actually it's less accurate because there are fewer samples taken. And going lower and force this to always stay on the low end at all times, negative two, negative two. We'll give that a try. And that case has really gotten blocky. In fact, let me render a bigger region here. So here there are giant stair steps. Now they're soft, but they're just really jagged. That's the lowest level where the samplings become really inaccurate because it's only one sample per 16 pixels. So in this particular case, the higher you go, the sharper it does get. Now it's not gonna be perfectly sharp because again, you get stair stepping. It's gonna try its best to create a sharp edge, but not so sharp that's gonna create stair stepping artifacts. So let's go even higher. Let's go to two, four, two, four. So that's pretty high quality. Render region again. Dolly in. So you can compare the regions. This is the really, really low quality area, huge stair stepping. This is the higher quality area. Still a fairly soft transition along the edge, but actually it's the sharpest of any render so far. Here's the render when it's set to zero two. 
So obviously each different setting in terms of min sample and max sample will give you a different result. But in terms of accuracy, the higher you go on these sliders, the more accurate it's going to get, but the longer it's going to take. So it's always a balance between quality and time.